This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. What a beautiful day, isn't it? Yeah. We'll take these for, what, three or four more months? That'll be fine. Thank you all very much. I would like to have you a good Manchester United Methodist Church welcome to Reverend Brockmeyer, who is here to speak with us today. So. I'm sure he's going to be giving us a great message, plus he might be able to tell us some tales about Pastor Phil if we ask him. <laughs> uh, just a few announcements quickly. Be sure to sign in the little red books and pass them down the aisle, if you would. Uh, there is a brunch next Sunday uh, following worship. Don't forget that with the uh, Operation Christmas Child. We have a veteran's plaque out in the Welcome, Welcome Center. If you'll look at that, if you see anyone that may have been missed, please, there's a place there for you to, to uh, leave the name, if you would, please. But we thank you very much. Next Sunday, we will be uh, honoring the veterans. And at this time, oh, oh yes, uh, people, people who are usually in the Sunday morning, Sunday school classes and so on, if you would go to the confirmation class, which is in the community room, uh, the far Sunday school room. They would like to have the people taking confirmation to uh, welcome you and for you to get to know them as they begin their, their journey there. Yeah, anyone is welcome as far as it goes. Okay? I know that uh, some of you are just chomping at the bit uh, about a football game, uh, but yes, our sympathy goes out to Pastor Mike and his team. Pastor Phil. <laughs> uh, what did I say? Pastor Phil. I'm sorry. My memory is fading too. Uh, but let us begin with this great day, beautiful day, that we can worship together today. Thank you. 
In the greeting prayer, we'll do this in unison. Father God, I come into your presence. You can't join with me. Oh, this is October 25th. <laughs> I'm blonder than you might know. Sorry, blondes. I'm just keeping you on your toes. Okay, <laughs> greeting prayer. I wondered why those songs weren't the same on <laughs> Those who know you under mean understand. All right, here we go. Friends, we have gathered here together to praise God and to witness to our faith as we celebrate the lives of those whom we love that are now residing in God's care. We come together in grief and knowledge of our cause. May God grant us grace. Amen. We will now join together in the opening hymn. The hymn uh, tune is God of Ages, and Reverend Lloyd Brockmeyer has written uh, some new verses for it, so it'll be on the screen. to stand up here and watch all of you looking like deer with, in the headlights. <laughs> My fault, I'm sorry. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O God of all ages, we worship today as your beloved people with a keen awareness of the history and heritage that has blessed us through the years, of the people who have modeled for us saintly living, of the witness to our faith who created a church and a community that has enriched our lives beyond measure. We sense that surrounding cloud of witnesses cheering us on from some heavenly grandstand to more courageous and compassionate servanthood. 
So be with us, O God of grace, that we might be worthy of our high calling as your people and the heritage which we have been privileged to share. In the name of Jesus Christ, prophet and pioneer of our faith. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you. As we have received grace and love in Jesus Christ, let us share Christ's peace with one another. Amen. going to talk about something today that we don't think about much. We're going to talk about saints. And in the Catholic Church a long time ago, they made arrangements to have certain people canonized or made saints. And Mary, the, brother, uh, the mother of Jesus, is a saint, Saint Mary, and the Catholic Church in Manchester is named after her. And there's St. Patrick, and I think he was the one that uh, got rid of all the snakes in Ireland. And so he's the patron saint of the Irish. And so they made saints like that. But in the Methodist Church, we're kind of simple. And so we just consider people who have made a great contribution to our church over their lives, that they're saints. And so when they pass away, we have this little ceremony for all the saints. And basically, the other thing that's interesting is that November is kind of be thankful day because today we're going to honor the saints and next week we're going to honor the veterans and then we're going to have Thanksgiving. So we're in kind of a meth in a situation where we're th thinking about our heritage and the things behind us. And so Basically, it's interesting because way, way back in the 1800s, they had a little hymn that they sang, and we don't sing it much anymore, but basically, it tells a story. And the first part of the hymn is, when the saints go marching in, oh, when the saints go marching in. Let's just take that much of it. And can you imagine that? And that's the story of the judgment day and all the good people go into heaven over a period of time. And then the last part of it's a little prayer. It says, Lord, I want to be in their number when the saints go marching in. And so that's a plea on the person who sings it to be a good person, to follow God and someday be considered a saint. So let's use that as our prayer. So if you'll bow our heads, dear God, when the saints 
come marching in. Oh, when the saints come marching in. Lord, I want to be in their number when the saints go marching in. Amen. Thanks for coming out. Our scripture for this morning comes from Colossians chapter 3 verses 1 through 4 and 8 through 17. Since then you have been raised with Christ, set your hearts on things above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things above, not on earthly things, for you died and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you will appear with him in glory. But now you must rid yourselves of all such things as these, anger, rage, malice, slander, and filthy language from your lips. Do not lie to each other, since you have taken off your old self with its practices and have put on the new self, which is being renewed in knowledge in the image of its creator. Here, there is no Greek or Jew, circumcised or uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave or free, but Christ is all and is in all. Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Bear with each other and forgive whatever grievances you may have against one another. Forgive as the Lord forgave you. And over all these virtues, put on love, which binds them all together in perfect unity. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, since as members of one body you were called to peace and be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom, and as you sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs with gratitude in your hearts to God. And whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it, in, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Well, I can't tell you what a joy it is to be here in Manchester United Methodist Church. Um, I'm glad Mary is with us today, my wife, and we're sitting by Debbie back there. I had lots of story to tell about Phil, but I didn't know Debbie was going to be here, so I'm going to cancel most of those out. Um, when Phil was appointed here, I said, you're going to have a ball at Manchester. There, that's going to be a great match for you. Um, they're the salt of the earth people there, and uh, they're willing to have leadership and guidance and uh, uh, doing servant ministry and feel is such a great blessing in that kind of thing. And they're hungry for the word of God to be taught to them and shared with them. At least I said something like that. I really said, you were great. So um, Phil, was a, it was wonderful to walk, work with him over all the years. He was at St. Paul's. Um, I learned a lot from him. He was such a dedicated servant and, and, and worked behind the scenes in so many ways, touching the people's lives in really deep, significant ways, More, many times behind the scenes when nobody knew about it. Uh, what a blessing he has been to us at St. Paul's and to Cedar Rapids community, and I know we'll be among you here as well. Um, what, a, what a great guy, and you're privileged to have him. Well, you all know that already, don't you? 
Uh, I don't know where he's on vacation for sure. I think he's probably wrecking destruction on some of God's beautiful people, ch ch uh, beautiful creation today. But uh, it's duck season or, or something like that, isn't it? Yeah. I was especially glad to be asked to be here on All Saints Sunday as, we, as you celebrate today the saints that have gone on to glory and you light these, can uh, on, uh, these candles lit here in honor of them uh, and then as other candles are lit in memory of the saints of the past of this community and church, I have many among them and I will want to light a candle as well. My Aunt Ella Holthouse uh, was a longtime member here, worked in the nursery and early childhood uh, part of the church and their son Carl had a TV repair business here in Manchester I think. Uh, my Aunt Ella Hartbeck uh, also belonged here and uh, her, my cousin Rhoda Von Taghi, uh lived just west of town here as Gary and Donna do now. I attended Rhoda's funeral, Mary and I here in the church not so very long ago. Um, this is on my mother's side of the family. Both parents went to high school here, three years of high school in Manchester, uh, being here during the week and then going home over the weekends, um, staying in a boarding house while they were here. Um, my mother passed away in Manchester, Iowa, many years ago now. My father, though, was not a member, but you'll not maybe recognize Ed Brockmeyer's name because he was a county supervisor here for many years, working out of the courthouse. His brother Elmer was veterinarian, a local veterinarian for years here in Manchester. And uh, their daughter uh, Jeanette, who had polio, had a gift shop here, I believe, uh, for quite some time. I assume that they were members of the church. And dad's sister Lizzie and her husband Fred Schaub lived on a farm west of town. And I'm quite sure they were also uh, coming, came here. Uh, probably this was before most of your time here today. But anyway, in a sense, it's like coming home for me. And uh, I count it as a high privilege to celebrate along with you the saints uh, of this community and of the past who are here. I've probably forgotten some people. I've, I, I've had so many, a number already this morning have said we have this connection or that connection here. And uh, those are really special times. I want to share with you today some portraits. Um, the first is a portrait of young Timothy. And I want to put him in this frame here, along with his grandmother Lois and his mother Eunice. And um, he, uh, Paul, been, Paul must have been in this portrait as well. All the people who influenced young Timothy's lives were here, in a sense, in this portrait. Um, it's, uh, he talks about provenient grace, and doesn't call it that, but he said, you know, that God had been in work a long time before he was ever born. And that's true of all of us, isn't it? We're, there's provenient grace at work in our lives long before we come into this world through our ancestors, through those saints who have gone before us. He was born uh, uh, to a very special family. Uh, they imparted him very special gifts. And Paul speaks of this sincere, genuine faith, a faith that he said had run first in his grandmother Lois and then in his uh, mother Eunice and now was in him. And he talks about the spiritual clothes that he had been imparted. Um, he said, uh, uh, boldly saying that God has not given us a spirit of timidity or of fear, but the spirit of power and of love and of a calm, a calm and well-balanced mind. Discipline, self-control. These were the clothes with which he was blessed. What a portrait of heritage. Uh, what a confirmation of God's blessing and grace in Timothy's life. Uh, put yourself in this portrait then along with those of your family heritage who have blessed you, the saints who have modeled, blessed, and enriched your lives. I want to kind of raise this one for a minute and uh, talk about another portrait. Do you, you remember the porch pictures? What are the, the porch pictures where you took pictures of the family on the porch of the house somewhere? Um, anybody recognize that porch pictures? I have one here, my family, Brockmeyer family. Um, among them uh, would be uh, Fred, uh, Dad's other sister, Fred and Lizzie Shaw, would be in this, and so would Uncle Doc and, and Dorothy, and probably some others. I'm in there in my bib overalls, I believe, somewhere among that uh, crowd. Uh, those were great times, uh, family times, uh, uh, and this special family, all a part of my heritage. And my, their saints have gone before most of them now. 
people who encouraged and uh, molded a good life uh, for me and inspired me in the Christian ways, a, a goodly heritage. A lot of good memories, maybe a little personal side here. Uh, my Aunt Lorena, uh, who was Dad's other sister, had always, uh, a lot of times, a family reunion at her house and, uh, in the summertime. And she had this huge table. It was so big, and I was a little kid, of course, and it looked huge to me, laden with food that everybody brought in, all the family there, special dishes. And she said to us little kids, you can reach for anything on the table except you have to keep one foot on the ground. Um, on the back porch, your Uncle John would always have homemade ice cream frozen and ready to put on pie or cake. You have those times of heritage, those times of family, those family times, the times when people modeled and shared with you what it meant to be a part of a Christian family, a Christian community, portrait of family heritage. Now, uh, each of you put your own uh, place in this portrait here. Uh, maybe the picture is not a back porch necessarily. It might be a picnic area. I have one on my mother's side uh, taken in a, a, a yard of one of the family members. And uh, this is a um, really, really special time. Sometimes maybe they can be sad times. Uh, sometimes they can be not so good a time. But for most of us, those times of gathering with family were very, very special times. Uh, heritage, celebrating a heritage to be treasured, to be celebrated, a gift for which we are, ought to be grateful on this All Saints uh, Sunday. Now for another portrait, uh, it comes from a word picture uh, of what the community ought to look like. And it was read to you so well this morning by our liturgist from Col uh, Colossians. He addresses this letter to all the saints. And uh, the children's message this morning talked about those special saints, but uh, in Paul's mind, everybody was a saint, a Christian. All of you were saints. He addressed all the people. They weren't very perfect at all. He talks about their problems and their uh, things that had uh, not so good in their lives. But he really um, held up as saints. And um, this is a community of God. He said, what, this is the way the community ought to be, what they ought to be dressed like, what they ought to have as God's chosen people, he calls them, or God's picked representatives of the new humanity, purified, beloved of God himself. And we're to put on these garments, he said, as God's people, uh, tenderness of heart and kindness and self-humiliation and graciousness and meekness and long-suffering and patience. And we must be accepting and forgiving of one another, forgetting, giving with the same generosity which God has forgiven us. Then he goes on, then, then comes what for me is a key verse in all of this. He said, uh, and love is the golden chain of all the virtues. Love is the golden chain of all the virtues. That bond of perfectness that binds everything together in a completeness or wholeness of life. The girdle, in a, in a sense, that makes all complete. An image of those, of a person of those who put on all these garments of character that have just, we just mentioned, wraps around it, all of this then, the golden cord of love. Binding all these virtues together into a perfect Christian character. Uh, what a vision of God's people. You know, what, think of all that you hear today in this portrait, robed out in this way. What a beautiful picture. I ought to take a selfie of this one, I? So. <laughs> Maybe a couple of them are all around me here. So anyway, uh, this is the way it ought to be as God's people, clothed with these kind of characteristics of life with which we can bless each other. Paul goes on to suggest ways in which uh, we can support and encourage each other in all of this. You were to let Christ's teachings, he said, live in your hearts by making you rich in the true wisdom words that will enrich your lives and make you wise. You're to teach and admonish one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, uh, helping one another along the right road while praising God with thankful hearts. As representatives of the Lord Jesus in the world, everything we do in word and deed, he says, should be done in the name of our Lord. A portrait of the church, the community of God, God's special people, you and me, Christians around the world, linked together by love. And even more than this is that sacred link of love that Paul talks about, that unseen cloud of witnesses that we especially witness to today, those people of our heritage who preceded us in death and 
join that eternal family of God. What, what a porch picture that must be in the house not made with human hands, eternal in the heavens. The next portrait comes from the love chapter in 1 Corinthians 13. It talks about some of the same things. He paints a picture of what close, intimate relationships of life ought to look like. You know, uh, the portrait might be of marriage partners, could be of some close friendships, could be of some small group within this church, uh, some significant others that surround our lives and bless us. The Bible tells us that God is love, and if that is true, then wherever love is present, there God is most real, most present in the loving union of two persons in marriage, that most intimate relationships where people have father, leave father and mother and become one, as the Bible says. The characteristics of this committed love, uh, Paul says, are patience and kindness, a love that seeks a way to be constructive, uh, never boils with jealousy, is not envious or boastful, does not put on airs, is not inde indecent or self-seeking, keeps no score of wrongs or gloats over others' sins. This love joyfully sides with the truth, knows no limit to its endurance, Paul says, and no end to its trust, hopes all circum in all circumstances, endures without limits, never fails. So it describes not only a good marriage, but any of the close relationships of life that bless us, the relationship of love which, where our lives are bound together. It seems like an impossible dream, doesn't it, of character? But it's a goal toward which we, pr we strive, and as uh, John Wesley put it, we're going on toward perfection. We're going on toward the perfection of love in our lives. And that's what this is all about, clothed with those characteristics of love with which we can bless each other and where life can be the, most, uh, the best that it can possibly be. So I encourage each of you to put on uh, yourself into this portrait in whatever close intimate relationships you have in life or choose in the future. Let these characteristics be something for which you strive and, and uh, in, your, in yourself and among those you most love. Someone said that we should never go out seeking someone who has all the characteristics to make them lovable, but we should build into our own lives those characteristics so that love will inevitably find us uh, because we are lovable and we are lovable. Someone worthy uh, of another, another's love, another's life spent with us. Here's a poem, a little hymn by Brian Wren. When love is found and hope comes home, sing and be glad that two are one. When love explodes and fills the sky, praise God and share our maker's joy. That's kind of what we're about today, isn't it? To love that binds us together as God's people, you know, to when love explodes, you know, when it's real, it fills the sky. Praise God and share the maker's joy. And then as we come to the communion time in a few moments now, this verse, praise God for love, praise God for life. In age or youth, in husband, wife, lift up your hearts, let love be fed through death and life in, in broken bread. Lift up your hearts, let love be found, fed through death and life in broken bread. May God's blessing on you be clothed with all the fullness of God's grace and love in your life. Blessings on you all and upon this church and this community.
come to a time in our service, uh, prayers of the people, to share our joys and concerns, and certainly, Pastor Brock Meyer, it's a joy to have you here today, and we thank you and your wife for coming and <clears throat> being a part of our service, and it's fun to hear about all the names that you were related to, yeah. Joys, concerns. <coughs> Um, we uh, need to lift up Joanne Kramer, um, who has been diagnosed with uh, um, not well. She's been given the not not so good news about her health. So she and her husband need our prayers. Anything else here? Oh yes. Well, we have a joy and concern. We have a joy that Virginia Nelson. They finally have figured out. <coughs> what's causing her health challenges. She's in the hospital, and her daughter Janet is here today, and she has a ways to go, but at least you have a road to travel as far as getting her better. So, yes. Went uh, thoughts and prayers with people who from Russia who were in um, the plane crash. Family has lost their last, Rita's lost her last aunt, 92, uh, living in New York. So prayers for that family. Donna, we've been thinking so much of you lately. It's so nice to see you, Donna Welcher. Um, had a lot of health challenges, but we've, I hope you feel, have felt our prayers for you. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come to the foot of your cross um, thanking you for the salvation that we have received through your Son, Jesus Christ, um, our Redeemer, our example of how to live. We lift up all <clears throat> the people who have been mentioned here and those concerns that we carry in our heart. Um, we pray, too, for Al Remling's sister Rose, who continues to have side effects from her can breast cancer, and we would ask that the doctors would be guided to know um, how to help her so that she may be relieved of the pain and suffering that she's going through. We are especially mindful of all those people who have raised us to know <coughs> Jesus, to know of God. We thank you for grandparents and parents and mothers and m sisters and fathers, all those people who've walked before us and uh, give us example to follow. We uh, pray that as we come to Holy Communion that we would feel their presence with us. We thank you for the wonderful music today and we thank you for everyone that is here. We pray these things in Jesus' name and for his sake. Amen. Let me preface this time with thanks to those who made this possible, this very meaningful service today. Lots of persons involved and uh, blessings on all of you and thank you for your ministry to this uh, service today. Ever living God, this day revives in us memories of loved ones who are no more. What happiness we share when they walked among us. What joy when loving and being loved 
we lived our lives together. Months or years may have passed and still we feel near to them. Our hearts yearn for them. Though the bitter grief has softened, a duller pain abides for the places where once they stood, it, where it's now empty now. The links of life are broken, but the links of love and longing cannot ever be broken. We see them now with eyes of memory, their faults forgiven, their virtues grown larger. So does goodness live and weakness fade from sight. We remember them with gratitude and bless their names. As we remember as well the memories, members who have but, but yesterday were part of our congregation and community. To all who cared for us and labored for all people, we paid tribute. May we prove worthy of carrying on the tradition of our faith, for now the task is ours. We, give, we thank you that they now live and reign with you. As a great cloud of witnesses, they surround us with their blessings and offer you hymns of praise and thanksgiving. Amen. At this time, we would like to read the names of the passing dead for our saints that are with us. For those of you who may choose to uh, light a candle for during the communion, communion will be served here uh, at the, as usual. If you can go around to those tables, there'll be people to help you light candles. We ask you to uh, have one per family if you would. At this time, let us begin the reading of the saints. David Campbell, drink water. Gerald Graham Wiltsey. Robert William Rath. Glenn O. Rasmussen. Harlan L. Caritas. William Dean Jones. Sharon Lee Cook. Elsie May Miller. Bobby Dwayne Snyder. Richard Harold Orkberg. Florence Logan. Mida, Mida Gussie Drinkwater. As we remember our saints, may they rest in peace. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God, and spoke to us through your prophets. And so, with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. 
Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. Your Spirit anointed him to preach good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the captives, and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, and to announce that the time had come when you would save your people. He healed the sick, fed the hungry, and ate with sinners. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. When the Lord Jesus ascended, he promised to be with us always in the power of his word and Holy Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, our Lord Jesus took bread, and he blessed it and broke it, and passed it among them, saying, Eat from this, all of you. This is my body, broken for you. And likewise, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples, and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as oft as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these mighty acts of Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us. As we proclaim the mystery of faith, Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world, until Christ comes in final victory, and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with your Holy Spirit and your Holy Church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. And now, as, as our Savior Christ has taught us to pray, let us pray together as God's people saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
Let us be in prayer together. O oh God of grace and love, we thank you for this holy time. Time of memory, time of celebration of those who touched our lives so deeply, modeling for us faith at its very best. Time of remembering of Christ's death and sacrifice for us. A time of fellowship that joins us together as one in the body of Christ. And so we thank you for this holy time. And pray your blessing and grace to be with us as we go on our way to do your will in the world. In the name of Christ our Lord. Amen. Again, we want to thank Reverend Brockmeyer for the message today and for being with us in this service. And we invite all of you to go on up to, the fel to Wesley Hall uh, for some fellowship, and uh, I'm sure there might be some things that uh, we'll taste, uh, taste your buds will like, too. But thank you all very much for coming this fine day. Yes, there is. Uh, this is, happens to be the first Sunday, isn't it? So it must be Chung Garden Day at 11.30. And I think we might even talk to Reverend Brockmeyer and his wife into going as well. So thank you all very much for this beautiful day. <laughs>